Om Sang Saraswati Namaha Namaste. And tonight we're going to try something new and we're going to allow people to come in and, with their questions by email. And uh, what is the email address for people who have questions? It's Devi underscore Mandir underscore online underscore class. Devi underscore Mandir underscore online underscore class at yahoo.com. At yahoo.com. So if anybody has any questions during the course of the class, then please feel free to send us a note and we'll get your question. We'll do the best we can to answer it. And tonight we're going to do puja to the 64 yoginis. And these are a very, very, very special class of beings that help us and empower us on our journey to union. They are the, the little energies of yoga. Uh, let's continue our recitation on page 171 of the Cosmic Puja. For each of the names, we're going to bow to them with one flower or some petals on the yantra. And in this way, we have the yantra situated, and then we've worshipped the yantra uh, with uh, uh, some uh, 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 shindur and chandan and akshat, uh, whole grains of rice. And then we established all the Sarvatabhadra Mandala Devata, all the gods, the excellent gods of the circle of the goddess, the Yantaraj. And now we're going to put on top of that yantra all these 64 yoginis. Om Hring Shring Pramanyagi Namaha. Om Hring Shring Chandikai Namaha. Om Hring Shring Rodri Namaha. Om Ring Shring Goryagi Nama Om Ring Shring Indraniagi Nama Om Ring Shring Komaryagi Nama Om Ring Shring Boyrabyagi Nama Om Ring Shring Durgai Nama Om Ring Shring Narsingyagi Nama Om Ring Shring Kalikai Nama Om Ring Shring Chamunda Nama Om Ring Shring Shivadutya Nama Om Ring Shring Baraki Nama Om Ring Shring Koshiki Nama Om Ring Shring Maheshwari Nama Om Ring Shring Shankaryagi Nama Om Ring Shring Jayanti Nama Om Rim Shrim Sarvamang Lai Nama Om Rim Shrim Kali Yagin Nama Om Rim Shrim Karalin Yagin Nama Om Rim Shrim Medai Nama Om Rim Shrim Shivai Nama Om Rim Shrim Shakambori Nama Om Rim Shrim Bimai Nama Om Rim Shring Shantai Nama Om Rim Shring Brahmariyagi Nama Om Rim Shring Rudranyi Nama Om Rim Shring Ambikai Nama Om Rim Shring Shakmayagi Nama Om Rim Shring Datri Nama Om Rim Shring Swahai Nama Om Ring Shring Swadai Nama Om Ring Shring Aparnai Nama Om Ring Shring Mahodoryagi Nama Om Ring Shring Gururupayagi Nama Om Ring Shring Mahakaliyagi Nama Om Ring Shring Badrakaliyagi Nama Om Ring Shring Kapalinyagi Nama Om Rim Shring Shemankarye Nama Om Rim Shring Ugra Chandaya Nama Om Rim Shring Chandogaya Nama Om Rim Shring Chandanai Kaya Nama Om Rim Shring Chandai Nama 
Hurrying shrink chandipati in the mam. Hurrying shrink chandi in the mam. Hurrying shrink mahamo higher in the mam. Hurrying shrink mahamai higher in the mam. Hurrying shrink shri ankori in the mam. Hurrying shrink balabi karanya in the mam. Hurrying shrink balapramatanya in the mam. Oh, rain string, mother known, but then ye in the mouth. Oh, rain string, Sarabuta, the bunny in the mouth. Oh, rain string, oh, my again the mouth. Oh, rain string, Taraya in the mouth. Oh, rain string, Mahani, dry again the mouth. Oh, rain string, be Jaya in the mouth. Oh, rain string, Jaya in the mouth. O ring string, say the Buddha in the mam. O ring string, Brahmachari in the mam. O ring string, Chandakan Tayak in the mam. O ring string, Kushman Dayak in the mam. O ring string, Skandamatraya in the mam. O ring string, Katyayanya in the mam. O ring string, Kalarati in the mam. O ring stream, Hakoria in the map. O ring stream, Koti Oginibio Nama. And the last one, we bow to the Koti, the tens of millions of yoginis, all the goddesses uh, that help us in our way to union. Now, there are a number of classes of energies. In fact, as many as there are manifestations, so many are the manifestations of energy, because all of the manifestations are nothing but the manifestations of energy. That is prakriti. pra kri iti Before pra kri becoming iti this Prakriti, what was before this became? The manifestations of Prakriti are all manifestations of energy. And there are various energies, Lakini, Dakini, Sakini, Hakini, and Yogini. And these are various energies that manifest and draw our attention and our awareness, our consciousness to various places. And the yoginis draw our attention to yoga. And we defined that last in time as chitta vritti nirod iti yoga. The cessation, the prohibition of all changes and modifications in the objects of awareness is yoga. And these yoginis are the manifestations of energy which bring us into yoga, into harmony. Let's bow to them. You'll find a lot of old friends that are already established on our altar here. They're coming again and again. Please. Don't neglect us. We're nice kids. Come again and again, mothers. Om Maya increase. Om Rim Shrim. We're translating this time as Maya. Rim Shrim increased in our cherished aspiration. Sha means Shanti. Ra means our mind. E means our heart. Anuswar means perfection. Perfect peace in our mind and our heart. This increase we desire. That's our well. I bow to the creative energy. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who tears apart thoughts. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the fearful one. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who is rays of light. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the energy of the rule of the pure. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the ever pure one. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the fearless one. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the reliever of difficulties. 
O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the man-lion of courage. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who is beyond time. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who conquers over passion and meanness. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who sends Shiva as an ambassador. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the boar of sacrifice. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who manifests from within. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the great seer of all. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the cause of peace. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to victory. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who is all welfare. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who is beyond time. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she with the gaping mouth. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the intellect of love. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the energy of Shiva. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who nourishes with vegetables. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who is fearless. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to peace. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who is like a bee. Remember the distinction between the flies and the bees. Uh, the flies are always flitting about from place to place and they go to all the dirtiest places. The bee goes straight for the nectar and makes honey. Uh, oh, my, I increase, I bow to she who relieves the sufferings of all. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to the divine mother. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to patient forgiveness. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to the creatress. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to the ablation. I am one with God. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to the ablations to the ancestors. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to she who is indivisible. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to she with a big belly. Oh, my, I increase, I bow to the form of whiteness, pure white. Uh, ever, uh, uh, always pure and clear and Perfectly devoid of any prejudice, devoid of any color. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the great she who is beyond time. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the excellent who one who is beyond time. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who wears skulls. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who destroys. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the terrible slayer of passion. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who slays passion. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the leader of passion. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who slays passion. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the spirit of passion. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who tears apart extreme passion. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who covers the world with ignorance. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to she who is the great Maya. And that has meaning on every level. Remember, the maya of Shankya is the illusion which obscures the reality. The maya of Tantra is the mother in relationship to her children. The one in relationship to the many. And the many in relationship to the one. And the maya of Vedanta is the one in harmony with her own self, dvithviyang na mamapra. There isn't a second. So I bow to she who is the great Maya on every level of understanding. Oh Maya, increase, I bow to she who causes love. Oh Maya, increase, I bow to she who is extremely powerful. Oh Maya, increase, I bow to she who is the strength of disembodied spirits. Oh Maya, increase, I bow to she who churns with love. Oh Maya, increase, I bow to she who controls all existence. Oh Maya, increase, I bow to the mother of protection. Oh Maya, increase, I bow to she who shines like a star. Oh Maya, increase I bow to she who is the great sleep. Oh Maya increase I bow to victory. 
O oh, Maya, increase I bow to conquest. O oh, Maya, increase I bow to the goddess of inspiration. O oh, Maya, increase I bow to the goddess of learning. O oh, Maya, increase I bow to the goddess of practice. O oh, Maya, increase I bow to the goddess of refinement. O oh, Maya, increase I bow to the goddess who nurtures divinity. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the goddess who is ever pure. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the goddess of the great night of surrendering the ego. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the goddess of great, the great radiant light. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to the tens of millions of goddesses. And how do we bow? You know, the traditional way of bowing is saying namaste. And the left hand indicates Shiva, consciousness. And the right hand indicates Parvati, nature, or Shakti, with all the energy of my conscious being. I bow to the divinity which you manifest from my heart. Namaste. And that's called bowing. When all of the energy of my consciousness is absorbed in offering of respect. It's a little different salutation than hi. All the energy of my conscious being is combined from my heart with the sincerity and the vyakulitha, which says... I bow to you. And that's my namaste. So in this way, we establish the flowers upon the yantra, and then we worship the astras, the weapons held in the hands of the Divine Mother. And the astra puja forms the ring in front of the pot, If you look at the map of the puja that we have on our website, you will find there the little ring, uh, almost like a horseshoe, uh, above the yantra. Let's worship these weapons of war and get a little greater understanding of why we wor worship weapons. Om Sarva Yudanam Pratabo Nimitas Twang Pinakinam Shulat Sarang Samatrishya Kritwam Bushting Graham Chibam Om Trishulaya Namaha Asibisha Sanakargas Teach Nadaro Durasada Shri Garbo Bijayasheva Dharma Pala Namostate Om Kargaya Namaha Chakratwam Vishnu Ruposi Vishapurna Misadastita Deviastastito Nityam Sudarshana Namoas today of Chakraya Namaham Sarvayutanam Shrestosi Doitya Sindani Sudanam Payevyaka Sarvatoraksha Tikshna Banam Namoas today of Tikshna Banaya Namaham Satis Pam Sarvadeva Nam Guhasya Chabi Shesata Sati Rupena Sarvatra Rakshankaru Namoas today Om Shaktaye Namaha Shasti Rupena Keta Twang and Puri Sanghara Karaka Devi Hastas Titoni Tam Mama Rakshankarush Rame Om Keta Kaya Namaha Sarva Yuta Mahamatra Sarva Deva Risudana Chapamam Sarva Toraksha Sakam Sayaka Satame Om Puna Chapaya Nama Pashatvam Nagaruposi Vishapur no Vishodaran Shatrunan Sudusakonita Nagapasha Namoas today Om Nagapashaya Nama Ankushosi namastubya gajanam niyamasada lokanam sarva rakshartam vidrita parvati kare om ankushaya namaha 
हीन स्थिति जनसी स्वनीन पूर गाया जगत सागम था पतु नो देवी पपे and this is the Astra Puja. Om, first among all the implements of war is the trident. From the trident, the ocean of existence comes together. Make a fist and accept the radiance. Om, I bow to the trident. And now here we have the threes, the harmony of all the threes on one staff. And that stands for the Kamakala. Kamkala. All the threes are in harmony. O Uma Brahma Vishnu Mahesh Ring Ring Kling Sri Ma Kali Ma Lakshmi Ma Sarasvati Satyaraja Tam. All the threes are in perfect harmony, and that harmony is the weapon in Shiva's hand. Om, I bow to the Trishul or the Trident. The sword that protects the universe, you hold the loft, the sharp blade against iniquity, the respected womb of victory, only to protect Dharma, I bow down to you. Oh, I bow to that sword of wisdom. In the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Arjun, cut this not burn, born of ignorance with the sword of wisdom and rise like a warrior. It's that sword of wisdom. The discus, oh discus, you are the form of Vishnu and you always reside in Vishnu's hands. Always stay in the hands of the goddess. Excellent intuitive vision, I bow to you. And that's the name of the discus. I bow to the discus. The discus is named excellent intuitive vision, Sudarshan. And he revolves incessantly. With revolutions of time, we perceive with excellent intuitive vision, cultivating that patience so that we can see. Impatiently, we only see our own impatience. But when we cultivate that patience with the discus of revolving time and continual application, as it says in the Kila Kastab. There's no mantra, no yantra, no medicine, or any other implement of your sadhana which will bear fruit without regular application. We need to do it again and again, and that's the austerity which cuts down the iniquities, which gives us the pure, excellent, intuitive vision. You are the ultimate of all implements of war, eradicating the armies of duality. Always protect from fear. I bow to the arrows, Tikshnaban, and the bow. And I bow to the sharp arrows and the bow, Tikshnabanai. Those sharp arrows which take aim. This arrow, the bow of Sankalpa, with the arrows of one pointed focus. They come into a harmony and they give our lives meaning because without a sudden culpa, where are we going? How can you make a journey when you have no concept of the destination? That's not a journey, that's wandering. Quite lost, I might add. Because in order to make a journey, you have an origin and a terminus, and then you make a line between the origin and the terminus, and it's possible to take some tangential trips and side trips from time to time, but a journey means that you're going someplace. And without that bow and arrow, you can't take the sun culpa. Om, I bow to the sharp arrow. You are the energy of all the gods, especially hidden, 
very deeply hidden inside. By means of this energy, always protect me. I bow to you. I bow to energy, that secret energy, that energy that's inside. It's called Kundalini. Now, outside, it's called Shakti. Give me one container. Here's one container. The space inside the container is no different from the space outside the container. The only difference is the container. And this is called Gut Akash, contained space. And this is called Maha Akash, unlimited space. Now, this Akash is the same. There is no difference. The only difference is this is contained and we have defined it and separated it. The same with Shakti. Outside, it's called Maha Shakti. And inside, it's called Kundalini. And every motion that we make is every thought, every action is the expression of kundalini. To say that your kundalini is sleeping is poetry. Kundalini only sleeps in a corpse. Kundalini is constantly active, but we are not aware. We are sleeping. The reality is our consciousness is sleeping. So now when we say wake up, wake up kundalini, we don't really mean that. We mean me. <laughs> Let my consciousness wake up so I can perceive kundalini in motion. And this is that energy that's deeply hidden inside we become more and more aware of the, the capacity of this hidden energy to express itself in the most positive and dynamic ways. This is a weapon of her, that the goddess holds in her hand. With the form of six points, you are the shield, the cause of dissolution of adversity. Always stay in the hand of the goddess and protect me. And remember the six points on the shield of faith. Auma and Mahakali, Mahalakshmi, Mahasaraswati, Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwar. These six points makes a shield of faith. I've got God with me. In all the threes. Om, I bow to the shield. The great measurement of all warriors makes all the gods victorious. Always protect me with the bow, with arrows ready to be hurled. Om, I bow to the bow. So we have the arrows, we have the bow. You are the bond in the form of a snake full of venom ready to strike. You always cause pain to enemies. Snake bond, Nagapash. I bow to you. I bow to the snake bond. And the Nagapash is a bond uh, like a, 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 a unify. You, you, uh, creates a unity. And he, he co causes fear to the enemies. Because we're striving for unity in every application. In our families, in our relationships, in our workplaces, we always try to harmonize and make friendship. And that is the venom to the enemies. The enemies want to cause disharmony. Other. So I bow to the snake bond. Curved sword or prod, ankush, it's the same as that ankush mudra, it's that curved sword that Kali holds in her hand. Uh, we bow to you, always you discipline elephants, that's the goad, uh, the ankush, that the mohut uh, makes the elephant move along the path. He commands the 
attention of the elephant with the, the Ankush. In order to protect the world's remain in Parvati's hands, Om, I bow to the curved sword or the Ankush. O oh, goddess me, the sound of your bell, which fills the perceivable world, destroying the prowess of all thoughts, protect us as, from evil as a mother protects her children. Oh, my bow to the bell. And you notice that when you ring the bell, it creates a tone of consistency which drowns out all the extraneous chatter. It demands that we pay attention. When you ring the bell, it demands that we pay attention. All the noises, all the chatter, all the voices that are debating their various ideologies inside the arena of our minds are silenced when the bell is played. And that's the weapon of the bell. Om battle axe, you are good action. Shuv karma. You are very sharp as you defend all the gods. Always stay in the hands of the goddess, destroyer of enemies. We bow to you. I bow to the battle axe. That's the pure actions, the pure seva, the pure uh, uh, functions that we perform to demonstrate the sincerity of our love. Om. I bow to the battle axe. Oh, Maya, increase. I bow to Durga, who holds all the weapons of war. She is the most excellent of all warriors, no doubt. Wherever, wherever in the three worlds, where there exist forces of duality, we bow to you. To she who tears apart thought, we bow. O oh, Maya, increase, I bow to Chandika, who holds all the weapons of war. And this is our battle. This is our, our, our battle plan. We are challenging the ego to a duel. Go ahead, assemble with all your forces. I'm just going to sit here and call my mother. You attack with all your armies. She is one woman and alone, but she's well armed. And she has t undertaken to defend all the devotees who take refuge in her. And that's what these weapons of war represent. Harmonizing our spiritual nature, drowning out all the extraneous voices that are chattering inside our mind, taking careful aim with our bow and our arrow towards the sun culpa, and focusing, and taking the sword of wisdom and the shield of faith, cutting down the iniquities born of ignorance and attachment, and protecting ourselves and defending ourselves, and let the mother do it for us. Do we have any questions? Swamiji, these 64 yoginis? Yes. Are, can, they, can we see them with our eye? We can. They do have forms. But generally, and specifically, many of them have sp specific murti images, like the nine durgas, who were also included, included in that list. The, uh, there were uh, also uh, uh, many forms of um, uh, the, the, the goddess of passion, uh, or ashta shaktivyo. All the eight shaktis were included in that list. Swaha, Swada, Kshama, Datri, many of the de devis from the tantric Devi Shukta were included in that list. Many of the deities from the Murti Rahasya were included in that list. As well as uh, 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 various others, Brahmani, Chandika, Rodri, Gauri, Indrani, these are all have specific murtis or specific images or specific forms that are worshipped. But generally, as a class of yoginis, we just call them all the energies which propel us and compel us towards union. So it's a class of energies which uh, inspire within us this movement towards you.
Other questions? Are, would they then be called more sattvic as opposed to rajasic or tamasic? Would they just be in that class? Or would they still be as three all balanced? All three are balanced in every application. We are not seeking to be only sattvic. I want to tell you a story, if you don't mind. There were three robbers. Three thieves came upon a man in a lonely place in the forest. And the first thief said, this guy is of no use for us. Let's kill him and take all his stuff. And the second robber said, there's no need to kill him. Let's just tie him up, bind him tightly, throw him in a ditch, and take all his stuff. And that's what they did. They threw him in the ditch, they tied him all up, they bound him, they stole all his goods and possessions, and they made off. The third thief walked down the path some way and he started to feel very much remorseful. He started to think, that poor guy is laying in a ditch all battered and bruised and bound. Let me go back and help him. And that's what he did. He went to find the, the victim and he attended to his wounds and he unbound him and he put him on his own horse and led him out of the forest towards his own village. And the victim came to me, said to him, you have been so kind to me. Please come to my village and come to my house and let me uh, demonstrate my appreciation to you. And the thief said to him, I can't go to your village. Why not? Well, the police are going to ask me why I was with the robbers in the first place. <laughs> and he disappeared. <coughs> he ran away. Now, the first thief was Tom Oguno. Says, this guy's of no use for us. Let's just kill him. Second thief was Rajaguna, said, no need to kill him, just tie him all up, bind him securely, throw him in the sansar and the ocean of worldliness, where he will have all kinds of miseries. <laughs> the third thief was Sattva. He says, no, let me... Find, let me attend to your wounds. Let me free you. Let me show you the way to go home. But I can't go into your village. I can't go to your house. Because I too am a thief. Sattva only shows the way to go home. He can't go home with you. Sattva still binds you to the world in activity. To go into the house, you have to be near guna, without any quality, not trying to do good, not trying to do evil, not trying to do anything. You become near guna, and then you can go home. So, yes, these yoginis are energies of yoga, of union, and they bring us towards, they propel us towards the goal, but they can't take us all the way. They bring us to the door, and that's where they have to disappear. To enter the door, we must go alone. Any other questions? Swamiji, um, on the one hand, when you were talking about the thought, 
Yes. And you said that there is energy outside and energy inside. Yes. It seems like there is just one energy. There is only one energy and that's our mother. Uh, and yet you said that each, each manifestation is a different energy. Yes. It's a different container. So therefore, we call the energy different. But it's not. We call the energy different and we distinguish the various students in our class. I can tell that there are other individuals sitting in the room and I have to say that they appear to me to be different from one another. And yet, if I look with the eyes of wisdom, they're the same. So there's only one energy, but it appears different in every form. The analogy is given if you place a number of pots of water underneath the starlit sky and you see the reflection of the one moon in the many pots. You look in each pot and you say, there's the moon. And we all know that there's only one moon. How come it's in so many different pots? Are there other questions? Yes. Uh, with the Astra Puja, yes. On page 184, the second line. Yes. Um, with the form of the six points, you are the shield, the cause of the dissolution of adversity. Always stay in the hand of the goddess and protect me. Now, what do they mean by... The, the six points being the cause of the dissolution of adversity. Well, when you have Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva with their shaktis as your protection, yes. as you, then the, all the uh, adversity is dissolved. The form of the six points is all the six in union. We have the three masculine and the three feminine qualities in harmony making the six and those six all together create a, a shield of faith which protects us from all adversity because I know that God is with me I, what could happen Satya Narayan Bhagawan Ki Jai what could possibly go wrong I know that God is protecting me and the upward uh, triangle, and there's the downward triangle. Yes. Expected. Yeah. And the, the upward one would be uh, the Shiva, Shiva and, uh, or the masculine, the masculine and, and the downward would be the feminine. feminine. Okay. So, right. so please. Question. <clears throat> you spoke about uh, sankalpa and the goal. Yes. Now, how do we cultivate the sankalpa shakti? Is it something that's inborn, or is it something that can be cultivated? Oh, it's definitely cultivated. And then we take that cultivation from the last harvest and we have new seeds, sanskars, which we can plant in the next harvest or before the next harvest. Uh, so we cultivate uh, the... We cultivate the, the, uh, the sankalpa through inspiration. Wherever we find our inspiration, we use that example as our role model and say, how could I be like that? How could I take the good points from that personality and that act attitude and that efficiency and that type of activity and em emulate them in my own life? And that's called a guru-disciple relationship. Whatever it might be, someone might want to be the disciple to Bill Gates or to Warren Buffett, and someone might want to be the disciple to Sri Ma, or somebody might want to be the disciple to any example that inspires them. So Pratamang Shailaputricha first was the goddess of inspiration and then came the goddess of sacred study and we began to learn. Uh, we studied the example. We studied what the ex example studied. 
We practice what the example practices. We refine that practice until we become more and more of the attitude of our example. And that's the way to cultivate the sanskara, the tendencies, the propensity, so that in the next lifetime, all the sooner we are drawn almost magnetically towards a pure example at an early age. And then we start from an early age to cultivate. And by the time we reach middle age, we become efficient at following the example. We become the examples ourselves. So it is cultivated. So what uh, we get an inspiration, but our lives are filled with examples of inspiration going away. Maybe. Some are and some are not. And that's the discrimination that we cultivate. There are many examples. You'll go to your college uh, and you'll see so many wonderful professors that are filled with inspiration and somebody may say something to you which inspires you to cultivate knowledge in a certain direction or field. And as you cultivate that knowledge, you come into association with other people who are studying and practicing in a certain field. And as you graduate from your studies, you look for ways to implement and to practice that knowledge and to make a life based on that knowledge. And you come to uh, in association with others who are using their knowledge for various purposes, amongst which some will be an inspiration to us. And we follow that inspiration. You've got to follow your heart. Follow your passion. Follow, uh, your heart knows the way. It's not just an intellectual decision. Your heart has a say in the matter as well. And your heart knows when it's, it's found its home. It found some, some commitment worthy of our attention. When we make that commitment... In your relationships, you didn't do it all intellectually. There was a little bit of place for the heart to negotiate as well. And your hearts, your hearts decided, hey, this is a commitment worthy of our, uh, our focus and attention. We, de we decide, we, we decide to commit and that's the same thing we do with every guru we meet along the way. If they are our guru, we, at some point, comes along when we decide to commit. And I believe that, at least in the West, the marriage is made a long time before the vows are spoken. Because people decide to commit and then the ceremony of committing is performed. So you decide with your heart. Your heart knows the way. And your heart knows where there's an inspiration that's pure and, and valid and going to take you in a good place. And if you follow that example, you're going to be where you want to be some years later. Be very, very, very careful when discriminating about the friends of, that you keep because you'll have a tendency to become like them. So choose the wisest and the best. And as I was out looking for the wisest and the best, I decided that I'd make an altar and stay here. Because <laughs> to me, they are the best. What, what better friends could I spend my time with? They never talk back to me. <laughs> Haven't a cross word to say to me. Are there any... Yes, please. Swamiji, is, 
is the difference between a devotee and a disciple one who makes that commitment? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, uh, devotees come and offer devotion and go without making changes in their lives. And disciple in Sanskrit is called the word shish. And a shisha means a mirror. And a mirror is the perfect reflection. The perfect reflection of the object that's shown in the mirror. And as disciples, we will want to make ourselves into the perfect reflection. I'm inspired to become like you. I feel the sincerity, the validity, the, the, the importance of the message that you are communicating in the way that you are communicating. And I want to communicate similarly in my own life. That's the commitment. So disciples... Enter into that relationship with the guru where devotees may or may not. Now, some devotees become disciples, but all disciples are devotees. If you're really a disciple and you're really in love and you want to honor the object the, of your adoration, the example that you want to follow, you want to honor that with as much bhava, as much intensity as you possibly can. So all disciples are devotees, but some disciples become devotees. Uh, some, de some devotees become disciples. So Swamiji, what part does the guru play in, does the guru always accept the disciple? Or, or is there a choice from the guru saying you are my disciple? No, a guru has nothing to say about it. <laughs> Gurus are made by disciples. A guru is like a tree. And some people come and say, I want the fruits. And some people want the flowers. Some people want the leaves. And some people want the wood. And the guru stands there holding the earth in place and giving to each according to their desire. The guru doesn't make the disciple. The disciple makes the guru. It's wishful thinking to say, oh, the guru will accept me and open up my mouth and spoon feed at me, <laughs> shovel all the knowledge right down my throat, and I can spit it back out as a, as a, 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 on an examination. <laughs> that is not the way it works. We take knowledge. We earn knowledge. We appreciate the privilege of assuming, of extracting the knowledge from the guru. Guru doesn't come and give lectures. That's for old swamis. Gurus are living their lives according to the principles and others who are inspired want to follow that example. So gurus don't go around making disciples. How can you make someone into an, an image of, or reflection of your own self? They have to want it themselves. I really want to change myself. Then they will become a disciple. It's not made by the guru. Are there other questions? Yes, please. Uh, there is a, one, one question about it's, uh, on uh, the Sustic Brahman, um, Sada Devanam, that's on page 183. It says, You are the energy of all the gods, especially hidden. 
Yes, we did talk about that. It's inside. It's inside me, and I have to wake up to see it. It's hidden not only from your vision, but from my vision as well. And I'm trying to wake myself up so, hey, Swami, wake up so you can uncover the mystery. Mystery not meaning that it's mysterious, like a magic trick. Mystery meaning that it's deeply secretive, it's deeply hidden, it, you have to look inside. And that's this energy. The energy uh, that causes us to look inside. Are there other questions? Please. You, you mentioned the other night um, about initiation into the yantra. Yes. And I didn't, I didn't get that. I didn't understand it. When a disciple is ready, then he or she will want to take initiation into a yantra as they do into a mantra. But this is predicated on the relationship between the guru and the disciple. The disciple wants knowledge. The disciple comes and says, how do I make that yantra? The disciple says, how do I worship that yantra? The disciple says, please give me initiation into that yantra. Then the guru will observe the conduct of the disciple and the sincerity of the disciple and the capacity of the disciple and say, yes, you're ready for a graduate course. Now draw the yantra. This is how you draw it. These are the dots. Connect the dots and draw and increase your practice. Expand the practice. That is initiation into the yantra. Then as the disciple begins to practice more and more with the worship of the yantra, he or she becomes more proficient and moves into a, the next step of worship, which is even of greater intensity, of even greater uh, duration, of greater intensity. Or look at how many other aspects we're incorporating into our worship now after the yantra. We've placed the, uh, the Sarvatthabhadra Mandala Devatas, all the deities of Mother's entourage. We've placed the 64 yoginis, and now we're going to go even farther and proceed with the various nyasas, the establishment within. So that's how the initiations work. There are, very, there are several initiations in the course of sannyas. In the course of sa means satya. Nyas means to establish within. Just like the nyasas, uh, uh, karanyas, anganyas, hridayadi nyas, akshanyas, dignbandhan, dignyas, these are all various forms of establishing, and sannyas means to establish truth within, or to be established with truth. So the, the energy of the guru and the energy of the tradition of all of the masters who have practiced and perfected this is within the practice itself. The initiation is awakening up and deepening of that connection um, in some way. Very good, very good. I agree. Om Sang Saraswati Namaha Namaste